Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Judy Garland and Walter Pidgeon in A Star is Born. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Among certain peoples, notably our good and brave friends, the Chinese, the passing of one year and the beginning of another is celebrated with fireworks. And taking a tip from them, we are going to touch you off a dramatic Roman candle that will send a pair of stars flashing across the sky in a blaze of glory. The stars are Walter Pigeon and Judy Garland. And the play is adapted from David O. Selznick's great motion picture, A Star is Born. Walter is starring now for Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer in White Cargo. And Judy comes to us from the cast of Presenting Lily Mars. It wasn't so very long ago that Judy's own star first appeared in the Hollywood sky. And tonight in A Star is Born, she plays the part of a small town girl who rises to screen fame. I think myself that this is one of the best dramas of Hollywood that Hollywood has ever produced. But uh, you'll decide that for us when you hear it. You know, there's a time of year for everything. And this is the time of year for making good resolutions. I have one to suggest now for some of the ladies in this audience. Not all of them, or even a very large number, but just a few. The few who have never tried Lux Flakes. As I understand it, Running a home is not an easy job at best. It certainly isn't going to be any simpler during 1943. And if you expect to make a lot of things last out the year, now is the time to begin taking care of them with Lux Flakes. That's one New Year's resolution you'll be glad to keep. Now our stars are on stage and the curtain rises, for a star is born, with Judy Garland as Esther Blodgett and Walter Pigeon as Norman Maine. You're not an actress, Esther Blodgett. You're enough to coat a farm girl, and none too beautiful at that. And the sooner you stop dreaming about Hollywood and glamour girls and acting in pictures, the happier you're going to be. It's late at night. In the bedroom of a North Dakota farmhouse, Esther Blodgett is still awake. She lies across the bed, sobbing softly into the pillow. Hearing again in her mind the words of her aunt, the door is opened quietly, and an old woman in a flannel wrapper comes softly into the moonlit room. Yes, sir. Yes. Who is it? It's me, Granny. I thought you'd still be awake. Yes, Granny. Stop crying. That won't do any good. I'm crying because because Aunt Maddie and, and Alec and, and everyone else in this family makes me so mad. Aunt Maddie, Alec, fiddlesticks. They are not important. You're the one who counts. I could be an actress, Granny. I could be. And I'd go to Hollywood, too, if I had the chance. But they just laugh at me because I want to make something out of myself. They think it's funny. Esther, everyone in this world who ever dreamed about better things was laughed at. Don't you know that? I suppose so, but... But there's a difference between dreaming and doing. You modern girls give me a pain. Why, when I wanted something better... I came across these plains in a prairie schooner with your grandfather. We burned in summer and froze in winter. We used our guns when we needed food, and then fought the engines to keep it. But we kept on going, and we didn't complain, because we were doing what we wanted to do. Can you understand that? Yes. Yes, I can, Granny. Could you do it? Could you do it even when your heart broke? Because for every dream that you may come true, you pay the price in heartbreak. I'm not afraid, Granny. I'm not. All right, then. Here. Take this money and go to your Hollywood. Oh, no. I, I can't take your money, Granny. It's your savings. I haven't got anything to save up for. Except for funeral. And now I don't believe I'm ever going to die. Oh, oh Granny... How can I ever thank you? By promising me that you'll never tell anybody where you got that money. I promise. If you ever do, I'll... 
I'll have you arrested for robbing me. Oh, oh Granny. Granny, darling. <laughs> Hollywood Boulevard, the heart of the movie metropolis. On your right, Grauman's Chinese Theater. Notice the paint blocks containing the hands and footprints of your famous star. We'll make a short stop here so you can inspect them at your... Hello. Holy Ander, Arms Apartments. Yeah, we got a vacancy. Four dollars, running water, convenient to all studios, no dogs, no cooking. What do you do? Oh, yeah, listen, wise guy, don't waste my time. No dogs, no cooking, and no cowboys. Good afternoon. My name is Esther Blodgett. I saw your ad in the paper. That's why we put it there, miss. Day, week, or month, please. Well, it's, it's, it's a little hard to say. You see, I'm going in the movies. Oh, well, take it for a week. It'll break the jump to Beverly Hills. Sign right here. Are all the studios really near here? All except Gaumont British. I suppose the best way to get a job is to go straight to the studios, isn't it? You know, I I haven't any illusions. I'm perfectly willing to begin with a little bit of a part. Or even as an extra. Four dollars, please, in advance. I beg your pardon. This is the central casting office, isn't it? Yes. Well, I'd like to register for extra work, please. To register? How long have you been in Hollywood? Well, it's, it's nearly a month now. Well, you know, we have 12,416 extras registered with us now. That's 16 times as many as we can use each working day. We haven't put anyone on our register in over two years. Oh, I see. Come over here. I want to show you something. Try later. Try later. Try those four later. girls later. operate our switchboard. Later. Every time later. one of those later. little lights later. flashes, it's someone later. asking for a job. And every try time later. a girl says try later, it means there isn't any job. We can't keep girls at the switchboard long. They go crazy. And every one of those little lights thought it was going to be a star. Do you still want to go into the movie? You know what your chances are? One in a hundred thousand. I know, but... But maybe I'm that one. Afternoon, Miss Blodgett. Hello. Any phone calls for me today, Mr. Randall? Nope. I guess Sam Golden and Cecil DeMille are writing your letters instead. How was the luck today? There wasn't any. Maybe you don't go at it right. <laughs> well, if I, if I haven't learned in three months, I guess I never will. But I'm not giving up. Esther. Hey, Esther. Hello, Danny. Hello, McGuire. How's the big assistant director and how's about some rent? Never mind that now. Listen, Esther, I've got to speak to you right away. Come in the parlor. I'd still like a small payment on that rent. Danny, what's the matter? Uh, look, remember when you first came here, I said I'd keep my eye out for a job for you? Well, believe it or not, I got one. Danny. Oh, that's wonderful. When do I go to the studio? Well, you don't exactly go to a studio. Oh, oh, it's on location. Well, no, it uh, it isn't really a movie job at all. It's uh, to be a waitress. Oh. Well, it it is a kind of a movie job in a way, if you look at it right. You said it was a waitress. Sure, but it's waitressing for Oliver Niles, the head of our studio. He's throwing a party tonight. There'll be a lot of big people there. I'll bet there'll be ten directors anyhow. And if you're there, maybe they'll notice you. Sure. I could make them notice me. Sure you could. Look, stick your hair down over your face. Make like Veronica Lake. Oh, no, no, I'd rather not. You see, I don't want people to say, there goes Veronica Lake. I want them to say, there goes Esther Blodgett. Yeah, but how can they say it if they don't know your name? Well, that's up to me. I'll make them ask my name. Mr. Niles' residence. Good evening. Hello. Let me speak to Oliver Niles, then quick. Yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Niles, it's for you, sir. Thank you, Smith. I'll take it inside. Hello? Oliver Niles speaking. Hello, Mr. Niles. This is your publicity department. Yes, Libby, what is it? Your publicity department begs to advise that your star, Mr. Norman Maine, has once again been thrown in the Los Angeles jug. What? That's right. Mr. Norman Maine, America's Prince Charming, was apprehended driving down Wilshire Boulevard with his siren wide open. He explained to the local police that he was a tree surgeon on a maternity case. 
Where is he now? I bailed him out an hour ago. He ought to be up your place any minute. Will this be in the papers, Libby? No, it won't be in the papers. But that's a nice, expensive hobby of yours, keeping Mr. Main's informal entertainments out of the public press. Look, Libby, you better find him and bring him here. Hi, Oliver. Nice party. Never mind, Libby. He's here now. I'll call you back. What's the matter, Oliver? You look worried about something. Do I? Evidently, you aren't. All right, Oliver. Go ahead and say it. I've got it coming to me. Don't make it any tougher on me, Norman. I don't want to stand here and preach. Take a look at my side of it. I'm trying to make pictures with you, but you don't realize... I know. The costs are going up and the grosses are going down. It isn't that so much. I just hate to see you go the way of so many others. You're a great star, Norman, but you're starting to fall apart. Oh, Oliver, stop it. First signs are always the same. Not being able to remember your lines. The cameraman trying to cover up your hangovers. All because you've got to have a good time every day, every night. I've warned you for a long time, Norman. Okay, Oliver. You're a swell guy. You won't lose any money on me. I'll promise you that. I'll be ready for the curtains when the time comes. And when it does, here's my epitaph. For amusement only. Come on, let's get back to the party. Will you have some more girls? Uh, or girls, Mr. Main? The caviar is very good. Oh, thanks. I... Oh, wait. Uh, maybe I will. Hmm. Oh. Very uh, beautiful. I mean, uh, very good. Uh, I've never seen you around here before. <laughs> well, I'm just working for the night. Audra? Hey, 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 don't go away. I'm starving. Oh, yes, sir. Now, let's see. Uh, which one would you take? Well, they all look good, sir. Yeah, uh, I believe I'll take caviar. No, Hello, Anita. Where have you been? Looking for you, mostly. Come on, I want to talk to you. Wait a second. Let's see. Uh, caviar, uh, anchovies, caviar... Take the tray away, please. Mr. Main doesn't care for any more. Do you, Norman? No, Normie doesn't care for any more. Greetings. Oh, oh, hello. Hello. Mind if I help? In the kitchen? Won't they miss you? Oh, no, they'll just look under the table, and when they see I'm not there, they'll forget the whole matter. Uh, what's your name? It's, it's Esther Blodgett. My name's Maine. <laughs> I know. Oh, what's so funny? Well, I was thinking about all your fans. How surprised they'd be if they could see you now, helping me put plates away. They don't know my finer side. They'd be pretty envious of me, meeting you in person this way. Tell me, uh, are you disappointed? Yes, a little. Well, what do you know? Oh, now you've done it. You've broken one of the good plates. Ah, don't worry about it. It makes the room look lived in. Tell me, uh, uh, just uh, why uh, are you disappointed in me? Well, I was sitting right behind you in the Hollywood Bowl that night you... you didn't want to be photographed and you smashed the photographer's camera. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, I'm told I crept into many a heart that night. Oh, Mr. Maine, I'll... I'll never be able to explain this, two of them. You know something? You've got very pretty hair. You better get out of here. And a lovely mouth and a charming little smile. Oh! Here you are. Anita, darling, come in, come in. What are you doing in here, Norman? Who, me? Oh, uh, I just wanted to be helpful. See? I see. Are you sure there was no other attraction? Well, it might be that old mania for putting plates away is coming back on me. Oh, Mr. Maine. Slippiest plates I ever saw. You know, it's rather odd that I always know where I can find you, if there's a pretty girl around. It's not only odd, it's embarrassing. And uh, we aren't married, darling, not yet, anyway. You're being deliberately insulting, Norman. I put up with you as long as I'm going to. Now, dear, don't lose your temper. Remember, we must try to keep the voice low. I uh, know you'll excuse us if we go on with our work. Oh, please. Let me help. No, don't hit Here, him. Here, put that plate down, Anita. Oh. Mr. Maine, oh, Mr. Maine, get up, please. Oh, he's unconscious. Unconscious. Now see what you've done. Oliver, Oliver, I, I didn't do anything. I didn't, I didn't. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, I thought you were unconscious. Come on, help me up. Are you hurt? Well, uh, no more than usual. Listen, the wolves are on us. Come on, we've got to get out of here. Oh, I can't. The dishes aren't finished. Oh, yes, they are. Watch. Oh! Come on! That's my house, Mr. Maine. The one with the oleander bush. Oleander bush? Right. Well. Wait. Uh, I 
bet I know what you're going to say. What? Good night. Good night and and thanks. Oh, wait a minute. Do you realize that all I've found out about you is that you're foolish enough to want to go into pictures? Why is it foolish? Look at you. Oh, that's what I mean. Now, uh, I'd like to go into this matter rather thoroughly. Oh, that's awfully nice of you. You uh, ever acted before? No. That is, I've never acted in anything important. Mm, that's all right, matter of fact. I used to be in school shows, of course. They said I had a future. Who, your uh, father and mother? <laughs> no. <laughs> the teachers in my high school in North Dakota. <laughs> well, they certainly ought to know. <laughs> well, just the same. I have got a future. In acting, I mean. And nobody had to tell me except myself. Well, that's fine. Uh, look, uh, don't go in now. Uh, let's go up to my place and talk it all over. Oh, no. Thank you very much, but I, I really must say good night. Well, wait a minute. Uh, well, I... See. Look, uh, has anyone ever told you that you're lovely? No. Well, you are. Thank you. And one more thing. This, uh... Uh, this is hard to say, but I want to say it anyway. On the screen, I'm a... Well, you know. Uh, in private life, I'm a... Well, you know. But whatever I do, I still respect lovely things. And you're lovely. Do you understand? I understand. And it's not that bump on my head that's doing this, neither. I'm glad. Good night. Good night. Hey, wait. Yes, what is it? Do you mind... Do you mind if I take just one more look? <laughs> Good night. Good night. Walter Pidgeon and Judy Garland will return for Act Two of A Star is Born in just a moment. When you join hands on New Year's Eve and bow out the old year to the tune of Old Lang Syne, will some such thought as this run through your mind? Oh, dear. I didn't realize my hands looked so bad. I really ought to do something about them. Doing something about them is really very easy. Much easier than many of you think. For you can get rid of that rough dishpan look while you're washing dishes. You don't have to buy expensive creams or lotions... All you have to do is to change from the strong soap that's causing the trouble to gentle Lux Flakes. Careful tests have proved that this is true. In these tests, many women whose hands were red and rough from strong dishwashing soaps changed to gentle Lux. Their hands improved in from two to seven days, and soon they were soft and smooth and lovely again. These women used no creams and lotions on their hands. They just changed to Lux. You can make that change for less than a penny a day. Yes, that's all it costs to change dishpan hands to soft, smooth Lux hands. So tomorrow and the next day and throughout the new year, keep a big box of Lux flakes on hand in your kitchen to save your hands. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of A Star is Born, starring Walter Pigeon as Norman Maine and Judy Garland as Esther Blodgett. When Norman Maine left Esther on her doorstep, he went straight home. This was very unusual, but he did not go to bed. That would have been too unusual. It's four o'clock in the morning, and he's on the telephone to Oliver Niles. Hello? Hello? This is Oliver Niles? Uh, yes, this is Oliver Niles. Hello, Oliver. Hello. Oliver, are you asleep? Not now, I'm not. Who is it? Good. This is Norman Maine. What? Who? Norman Maine. Norman, what have you done now? Are you in jail again? No, 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 Oliver. No, Oliver, listen. Oliver, I met a girl. Oh, oh is that all fine? Oliver, this girl, she's beautiful. Yeah, uh, she's beautiful. Yes, I know. You want me to give her a screen test. Uh, Oliver, this girl has got something. I know it. You know it. All the others had something, too. No. no, 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 no. I tell you, Oliver, she's got that sincerity and honestness. Uh, that uh, sincerity and honestness. Makes great actress. Sure, yeah. I'll do the test with her myself tomorrow morning. How does that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oliver. What? What? Tomorrow morning. Screen test. Yes, yes, anything. Anything at all. That's fine, Oliver. I know you appreciate this little tip. 
I got another one that's six tomorrow. Good night. All I know is some guy wants to speak to you. He's on the phone now. Hello? Hello? Four o'clock in the morning. Fine time to call him. Hello? There doesn't seem to be anybody there. Well, all I know is some Hello? Guy... Hello? Who's this? Oh, hello. This is Long Man. Yes? Hi, Esther. How are you? Well, uh, well, I'm all right, but... Listen, it's all fixed. What? It's all fixed. I'll fix it tonight. You fixed what? Didn't I tell you? Screen test. Uh, wh- wh- what did you say? Screen test. Tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. Bye. Oh, but wait, wait. Oh, oh. What's the matter? The... Bad news? Oh, but no, it's, it's it's just that I'm 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 going to get up t- tomorrow morning. They're, they're going to the... oh. All right, all right, all right. This is only a test, fellas. Get going. All set here. Well, then let's take it. Ready, Norman? Any time. Where's the girl? I'm right here, Mister. All right, let's go. Right over there, Miss. Uh, what's your name? My name is. Right Mr. there. That's the girl. That's it. Okay, Rudy, let's go. He'll know your name soon enough. The whole world's going to know it. Well, I don't right? know. I, I'm, I'm so scared. Maybe I'd better not try it today. What do you think? Don't you think if I could wait until tomorrow, maybe... Oh, come on, come on. It's only a test. Only? Well, they all had to go through this. Hetty Lamar, Barbara Stanwyck, Myrna Loy, and now Esther Blodgett. All right, I, I'm ready. That's it. Quiet, quiet. Rolling. Give that long speech plenty of punch. Here. Uh, I'll try to. Test. Esther Blodgett. Four, two, eight, one, six. All right, Norman. You said you were going to stay. Have you changed your mind? Yes, I... I have. You're afraid, aren't you? That's what it amounts to. I suppose you could call it fear. But it's more than that, too. I'm ashamed for... for so many things. For ever coming here at all. For ever having loved you. But I'll never be free of you. I know that now. And I'll have to live with myself and my thoughts. And you can't run away from your own thoughts. Just sign right there, Miss Blodgett. Here, Mr. Niles? That's it. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Niles. I'm so glad you like the screen test. Mm, I may as well tell you that my whole organization thinks I've gone a little nuts to sign you, even at this figure. Eh, Maybe they're right. I hope they aren't. (laughs) We won't know either way for a while, will we? You look like a nice girl. I think I'm going to like you. But that's not important. I think the public will like you. That is important. I know it is. We're going to change your name, of course. Esther Blodgett is, well, it's it's Esther Blodgett. You understand? Mm -hmm. From now on, your name is Lester. Vicky Lester. Vicky Lester. Vicky Lester. Oh, it's beautiful. You'll change your hair a little, too. You'll have to learn to walk all over again. Will I? And for heaven's sake, learn to close your mouth and keep it closed even in your love scenes. Yes, sir. Good evening, everybody. This is Billy Moon again, the Hollywood star chaser. These tired old eyes have again been glancing over the latest pipe dreams of the studio publicity departments, and I find ravishing, but ravishing items concerning a newcomer discovered by Oliver Niles, a new starlet, a Cinderella of the Rockies named Vicki Lester. This charmer, according to the publicity department, couldn't be more divine. But this reporter will lay four to one that she'll never be heard from again. <laughs> I listen, you dress people. We're shooting on the set this morning, not in the commissary. Take it up. Take it up. Morning, Mabel. Good morning, Mr. Maine. What'll it be this morning? The usual, Mabel. Orange juice and bicarbonate of soda. Make it two bicarb. It was a very successful party last night. Acme Trucking Company. No, Mr. Smith is not in. Hello, Acme Trucking Company. Uh, Mr. Smith is not in. What goes on over there? Vicki Lester. She's rehearsing again. Bring that stuff over to her table, will you? Acme Trucking Company. Mr. Smith is not in. Acme. No, Smith ain't in. Acme Trucking Company. I'd like to speak to Mr. Smith. Oh, Mr. Smith isn't in. Oh, <laughs> Norman. <laughs> What's this between you and Smith, anyway? <laughs> well, I've got a part. 
It's only one line, but it's in a picture. Oh, so it's ambition that made you break that date with me last night. Well, I had to be here so early in the morning. So did I, and I had to stay up all night to make it. You've started your picture, haven't you? No, we're still in the testing stage. Can't seem to find a girl for the lead. Gee, you'd think with all the girls there are that... Yeah, but this girl's got to be different. She's got to be little and cute and sweet and in touch. Well, knock me down. What? Well, beat my brains out. Norman, what's the matter with you? Come on, hurry up. Finish that coffee. Where are we going? Oliver Niles' office. On the run. Oliver, it's the only thing to do. You've gone through the whole casting directory, haven't you? But look, Norman... I'll work day and night, Mr. Niles. I'll give it everything I've got. And I'll work with her, Oliver. I can be mean or nasty or anything you want, Mr. Niles. If she clicks, Oliver, you've got a star overnight. Well, what do you say? Okay, she's in. Esther! Oh. Oh. Esther! Esther! Wake up! Esther! And little Vicki Lester has made good. Vicki Lester is a new star, just as I predicted on this program some time ago. Just how good she is was known early this evening after the preview of her first picture, in which she plays a featured role opposite Norman Maine. Norman may be starred, but he's decidedly not the main attraction. I you great, Vicky. Vicky, you show us well. Oh, I'm so happy to be Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Would you like to sit down, Esther? I can't dance with you taking all these bows. Oh, Norman, it's all so wonderful. I'll never forget this night. Let's go outside for a minute. It'll be cooler out there. All right. Lovely, darling. Lovely. Thank you. See those lights, Esther? Down there? That's Hollywood. It's wonderful, isn't it? A crazy quilt. No. It's a carpet spread for you. It's yours from now on, you know. It's come, Esther. A star has been born. You'll have everything in the world you want. And I hope to make you happy. Hasn't it you? There's one thing I never had. Lots of times I've told myself I'd found it. But I always knew I was kidding. Still... I never stop looking for it. Maybe it'll come. I think it has come, Esther. I only wish it, it weren't too late. Oh, it's not too late, Norman. It's not. You can't throw away your life the way I've thrown away mine and have anything left that's good enough. You can. Oh, Norman, you can. You, you, you shouldn't tell me that, Esther. I'm afraid I'll begin to believe it. I want to tell you, Norman. And I want you to believe it because, because... I love you too, Norman. I don't know. Maybe I'm not thinking fast enough this morning. What are you two trying to say? Just this, Oliver. We're going to get married. You're going to what? <laughs> I guess you didn't read that line right, Norman. All right, I'll try it again. We're going to get married, Oliver. Both of us. Yes, to each other. What do you think of that? When, where? We're going to elope in the conventional manner. <laughs> What's the matter, Mr. Niles? He's trying to decide whether it's good for the studio. Is it, Mr. Niles? It is. And bless you, my children. When's it going to happen? Well, we thought we'd just sort of sneak out sometime. Oh, <laughs> sure. But you mustn't hurt people's feelings. Matt Libby, for instance. He has a very sensitive nature. He'd feel offended if he didn't have a chance to congratulate you. Miss Horton, send Libby in here. I've been trying to keep him out. Hello, Niles. Listen to this. The screen's ideal romance blossomed into breathtaking reality today when Vicki Lester and Norman Maine, America's dream lovers, slipped through the portals of holy matrimony. How does that sound? Horrible. Oh, you see, Mr. Libby, we're going to elope quietly. Sure you are. Sure. It'll be the biggest elopement this town ever saw. We'll get a tie-up with the army and have an escort of 20 bombing planes all the way to Yuma. Make personal appearances in Denver, Salt Lake, Seattle, Vancouver. Let's make this thing international. Norman, is he going with us? I doubt it. Look, Niles, don't you think we can work this thing out better alone? No use bothering the happy couple with all these details? I'm sorry. We didn't realize we were in the way. While you're settling the details, you don't mind if I go out and buy this lady a ring, do you? Sure, go ahead. We want everything legal. Come on, honey. See you later, Oliver. Yeah, now, there's a charming match for you. Nice girl like Vicky and public nuisance number one. Norma's all right, Libby. If you pardon my pointing, Vicky's business is her own. Doesn't require any comments. I didn't comment. I just said it's a dirty shame. Just go ahead and plan the elopement. That's all that's required. Hey, what's the matter? You sore or something about this elopement? No, I'm not sore. Go on, Libby. Beat it. I'm busy. Mr. Holloway, 
Hollywood question mark for this week, folks. What famous star, since his marriage to another famous star, has turned over a brand new leaf and is now taking a non-alcoholic honeymoon? But why do his friends think his bride came about six pictures too late as far as the public is concerned? Because the star's last six pictures have been what is politely known as turkeys, box office flopolas. Yes, sir, folks, it was a gay career and a short one. Norman, I just can't believe it yet. Would you mind telling me again very slowly? That is your new house. This is your new grass. Those are your new trees. And here's your new husband. Well, do you like the place? <laughs> it's the most wonderful surprise anybody ever had. I kept thinking we were going to live at the beach house, and then this... Oh, we'll keep the house at the beach, but this is special. This is our castle, where we'll never use ugly words like contracts and pictures and careers. When we come in these gates, we'll check the studio outside. Oh, no. Hey, hold that phone. Oh, for the love of... That's it. it. Did you get that shot, Otto? Got it. Good. Caption, their honeymoon never ends. How are you, folks? Well, Libby, this is a surprise and a very unpleasant one. I just dropped over to welcome you home. How are you, Mrs. Maine? Fine, thanks. Hello, Otto. Hello, Miss Esther. Well, my friends, this is a nice little place you have here. Very tasty. Libby, if you didn't like it, we'd sell it. All right, now let's get some more pictures. Now, uh, if the bride will just sit here and the groom stand behind her, we'll have something unique. Swell. All right, Otto. Caption, their honeymoon still continues. <laughs> Hello there. Ah, oh, the producer. Their honeymoon ceases abruptly. Hello, Oliver. Hello, Norman. Glad you're back. How are you, Esther? Hello, Oliver. <laughs> I'm, are you interrupting? Yes, but Libby beat you to it. Oh, we just want a couple more. Now, that's enough of both of them, Otto. What the papers are asking for is exclusives of Miss Lester alone. Oh, I see. Come on, Oliver, let you and I get exclusive. Sure. Stay for dinner, Oliver. Thanks, I will. All right now, Miss Lester, let's have one with a smile. That's it. Well, Oliver, what's on your mind? How's the uh, dividend situation? Very pleasant. I think we'll show two million on the next quarter. Ooh, that was the smart move of mine to sell my stock then, wasn't it? Well, anyway, you can thank me for some of those dividends of yours. Mm hmm? Can't you? Oh, sure, sure. Oh, uh, that was a little too quick, Oliver. Enchanted Hour was a smash hit, wasn't it? Made Esther a star overnight. Yeah, and it should have. Uh, what about me? Let's wait and talk business at the office, Norman. Come on, let's have it. Didn't they like me? Well, maybe the part wasn't right. It was the best part of the year. Look, Oliver, do you think I'm slipping? Come on, give it to me. Can you take it? Go ahead. The tense is wrong, Norman. You're not slipping. You've already slipped. Uh... But uh, my fan mail's still big. Norman, Norman, fans will write anybody for a photograph. It only costs three cents for the stamp. That makes photographs cheaper than wallpaper. But every quarter they pay for a theater ticket buys them the right to be a critic. And your last few performances, Norman, have not pleased your critics. Remember I told you I'd be ready for the curtains when the time came? Well, here it is. Let's call off the contract and no hard feelings. Well, we're not quitting yet. I've got a swell script lined up for you, Norman. About Esther. If you think I'm going to get in her way... Well, as a matter of fact, as it happens, there isn't anything for her in this story. I more or less plan to star her in a picture of her own. Maybe with that uh, young Pemberton opposite her. He's coming along very nicely. Good for young Pemberton. All right, Oliver. We'll make a try at it. Let's hope it's not too late. Let's hope it's not too late. <laughs> for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief intermission, we'll hear Act Three of A Star is Born. Starring Judy Garland and Walter Pidgeon. Now, when you try out a new thing, naturally, you want to find out everything you can about it. Here are some of the things women have been asking about the new rayon stockings. Perhaps our answers will help to settle some questions in your mind. Aren't rayon stockings pretty much all alike? No more than all silk stockings were alike. For one thing, high-twist rayons usually have more elasticity, so they fit and wear better. How do rayons really wear? Well, that depends partly on the weight you buy. 
the heavier weights will naturally wear longer, as they do in silk. And wear also depends on the care you give rayons. If you rub them with cake soap or use strong wash day soaps, you'll probably be disappointed. For those things weaken elasticity, and your stockings break easily into runs. So give rayon the same gentle care you give silk and nylon. Nightly luxing. Rich, lukewarm lux suds save elasticity. Cut down expensive runs. Do rayons take longer to dry? Yes, and thorough drying is important. Rayon is temporarily weak when it's wet. Regains its strength only when it's dry all the way through. Your rayon stockings may feel dry before they really are. So it's safer to allow them from 24 to 48 hours drying time. To sum up, Lux Care means longer wear for rayons just as it does for silk and nylon. So stick to gentle Lux. Over 90% of the makers of stockings, makers of rayon, nylon, silk, cotton, and wool, advise Lux Flakes. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. You might like to know what New Year's resolutions our stars have made. I'll ask them about it right after the play. But now here's Act Three of A Star is Born with Judy Garland and Walter Pigeon. A year has gone by. A year during which Esther rose steadily to stardom. And Norman dropped just as steadily into oblivion. It's the night of the Academy Award dinner. At a table in the corner, Esther and Oliver Niles wait anxiously for Norman to arrive. The master of ceremonies is speaking. We have already applauded with our hearts as well as our hands when awards have been given to those gentlemen who during I the past year... I wish Norman would come. Do you think anything's happened to him? Of course not. He's probably been held up in traffic, that's all. <laughs> you just think about that Oscar lady. you're going to get. We present to her the Academy Award for the finest performance of the year. The unforgettable Anna in Dream Without End, Miss Dicky Lester. Go on, Esther. Oh, get Oliver. your award. Oliver, I, I wish Norman were here. Right this way, Miss Lester. Congratulations. Thank you. What more can I say, Miss Lester? This statuette says it for all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, when something like this happens to you and you try to tell how you feel about it, you find that out of all the words in the world, there are only two that really mean anything. Thank you. All I can do is to say them to you from my heart. All I can do is to tell you that I'll keep saying them just as long as I can... Hey! Hey! Norman. Very pretty speech, my dear. And I want to be the first to congratulate you on that valuable little piece of bric-a-brac. Now I want to make a speech. Gentlemen of the Academy and fellow suckers, I got one of those once for best performance. Once, don't me a thing. People get them every year. Well, I want a special award. Norman, please. Something nobody else can get. I want a statuette for the worst performance of the year. I want three statues for the three worst performances of the year. I earned them, and everybody that saw those last two masterpieces of mine knows I earned them. What I'm here to find out is, do I get them, or do I get them? Answer yes or no. Use it, quick. Answer yes or no. No. All right, Esther, I've got him. Come on, Norman, come over to the table. No. Hello, Vicky, dear. Allow me to congratulate you. You must be terribly proud and happy tonight. <laughs> Norman, dear. Oh, Norman. That's it. What, what have I done? Somebody give me a drink. Who is it? Oliver Niles calling. Oh, Oliver, come in. How are you, Esther? Oh, Oliver, I've missed you. Everybody's missed you. Sit down. Did you have a nice trip? Well, a three months tour over the theater circuit scarcely comes under the head of pleasure. <laughs> but the way they're screaming for your pictures all across the country. Miss Lester, if I may talk shop, you are a knockout. Thank you. That's good to hear, Oliver. You've been crying, haven't you? Yes. A little. Why? Oh, I... I guess maybe it's just nerves. 
I'm worried about this next picture, Oliver. You needn't be. I just saw the first week shooting. You're headed for another Academy Award this year. Really? Oh, thanks. That's encouraging. How's Norman? Norman? Well, he's... He's trying awfully hard, Oliver. Has he been... Uh, is, he, is he all right? He's gone to a sanitarium. A sanitarium? Well, it was his own idea. You see, he really wants to stop drinking. And I think he could if... I know. If he had a chance to work again. Well, maybe we can fix it. Oh, Oliver, could you? Could you do that? I... I think so. Oh, thank you, Oliver. But he mustn't ever know I told you. We won't know, Vicky. Then you mustn't worry, do you hear? <laughs> I want you to be good in this picture. I'll try, Oliver. It's all I can do for you. And one more for the books, folks. What star recently released from a sanitarium where he underwent a rest cure <clears throat> is now hanging around the Santa Anita racetrack while he gets into shape for a comeback? Your guess is as good as mine, and mine's no guess. Hello, Charlie. Well, hello, Mr. Man. Haven't seen you in a long time. No, I've, uh, uh, I've been resting. Uh, ginger ale, please. Ginger ale and what? Ginger ale and ginger ale. Oh, new leaf, huh? A whole new book, Charlie. Pick it up, Charlie. Scotch and soda. Well, well, a stranger in our midst. Hello, Libby. Mr. America of yesteryear. Say, did they let you run around now without a keeper? Oh, uh, I'm a trustee now. Good behavior, you know. But I didn't expect to find you at Santa Anita. What do they do with the actors when you're away? Oh, they cut them in slices and fry them with eggs. I suppose you'll be here all the time now that you've retired from the hurly-burly of the silver screen. Well, we're staying down at the beach house now, and it's, well, it's pretty lonesome with Esther away working all day. Well, I wouldn't squawk about that if I were you. It's nice somebody in the family's making a living. Go a little slow, will you, Libby? I don't want to forget we're friends. Friends, my eye. Listen, I got you out of your jams because it was my job, not because I was your friend. I don't like you. I never did like you. Nothing made me happier than to see all those cute little pranks of yours catch up with you and land you on your celebrated puss. Pretty work, Libby. Always wait till they're down, then kick them. Why, you're not down, actor. You fixed yourself nice and comfortable. You can live off your wife now. She'll buy the drinks and put up with you even if nobody else will. Why, you... Take a swing at me, will you? Get up, you four-star ham, and I'll knock you down for keep. Oh, throw him out. Get up there. Get up and get out of here. Don't bother to throw him out, Mike. He's just a harmless drunk. Well, okay, Mr. Libby, if you say so. Sure, let him go. What can he do? He can't fight any better than he can act. <laughs> hey, hey, they're going to the pool. Hey. Hey, me. You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Give me a scotch. Double. Vicky, please, please sit down. You're going to be sick carrying on like this. Why don't you try to get some sleep? He's been gone for four days. Four days and not a word. Oliver, how can I sleep? How can I do anything else? Oh, Oliver, I can't answer. I, I just can't. Will you please? Hello? This is Oliver Niles speaking. What? Where? All right, thanks. Oliver, what's happened? Where is he? He's all right, Vicky. He isn't hurt. He... Well, they're holding him downtown in the night court. I, I'll go right down and get him out. What is it? What has he done? He's been arrested on a disorderly conduct charge. I'm going with you, Oliver. Esther, please. It isn't any place for you. And if it gets in the papers... What do I care about the papers? Norman's in trouble. He needs me. I'm going to him. Next case, Alfred Hendrickson, known as Norman Maine. Where is he? Yeah. Drunk and disorderly. Crashed car into tree. Resisted arrest and injured one of arresting officers. How do you plead? Guilty. Were you Norman Maine, the actor? Yes. You've come pretty low, haven't you? Ninety days in the city jail. Wait, please. 
Your Honor, I, I'm his wife. Yes, I recognize you, Miss Lester. Please, I, I promise you, Judge, this will never happen again. I'll be responsible for him if you'll... If you'll just not send him there, please. You realize that this man, when drunk, is obviously a menace to public safety? Yes. You realize, too, the responsibility you would be assuming to the court and to the Commonwealth? I do. Very well. Sentence suspended. Prisoner remanded to custody of his wife. You may take him home, Miss Lester. Norman. Norman, are you all right, darling? I'm... I'm so tired, Esther. How is he, Esther? Talk low. He's still asleep in there. That's the best thing for him. Oh, it's awful to see this happen to someone you love. And you know in your heart that, that it can't get any better. Do you still love him, Esther, or... Do you feel sorry for him? It's so hard to tell where one leaves off and the other begins. I only know that all I can do now is stay with him and try to help him. So will I. Between us, we'll take care of him, won't we? You're very fond of him, aren't you, Oliver? I'm very fond of both of you. I know. That's why I know you'll understand what I have to tell you. And I think that after what happened last night, you might know what it is. I can't do any more pictures, Oliver. I'm going away. For good. With Norman. You can't do that. You're at the peak of your success. You've worked too hard to get there. Yes, I've worked hard, Oliver. And what difference would it have made if you and Norman hadn't worked harder to get me there? No one can help people to careers. You made your own career. It's your whole life, Esther. Yes. That's what's been wrong. I've thought it all out. Maybe if I hadn't been away from him so much, things might have been different. What happened last night might never have happened at all. But it's too late to think of that now. But maybe it's not too late to go away with him and start over again somewhere. It's your life you're giving up. Yes. So I can try to give Norman back his. Can you honestly tell me I'm wrong? No, I can't honestly tell you that. There won't be any more Vicki Lester, Oliver. Goodbye, Vicki Lester. You were a swell girl. And good luck, Mrs. Norman Maine. Goodbye, Oliver. And thank you for everything. Hello, darling. Norman. This is your husband coming in to apologize again, dear. Norman, have you, have you been out there long? Oliver Niles was here. Yes, I know. Uh, uh, I, I mean, uh, I thought he would be. You're looking very sad, darling. What other troubles have you got? None. <laughs> I was just playing a little scene with myself. <laughs> <laughs> now, look. I'm just coming out of the jitters, and you're just going into them. This is a swell household. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> i tell you what we'll do. I'll promise to brace up if you'll go on the wagon. Well, I guess I have been drinking too much. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be an athlete. Gee, you mean with great big muscles and everything? Mm, roughly speaking, yes. You're going to join the YMCA? No, no, no. That, that, that costs too much. I'm, uh, I'm going wading in the Pacific. Now? Sure. Oh, well, you, you won't go out too far, darling. <laughs> will you? Uh, a little water once in a while wouldn't hurt me any, would it? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, if you don't mind, I'll be running along. Could you have a hot toddy? Um, I mean, uh, some hot soup for me when I come back? Some hot soup. And I'll make the sandwiches. Oh, Norma, do you have to? <laughs> Give me a kiss, darling. All right. Don't be long. I won't. Oh, darling. Yes? Do you mind if I take just one more look? <laughs> Norma. So long, sweet. Well, that 
be all, Miss Lester. Have you packed everything? Yes, ma'am. The bags, the trunks, everything. Then have the car brought around. Don't tell me I can't see her. I'm her grandmother. Esther. Granny. Oh, Granny, darling, I'm, I'm so glad to see you. What made you come? I know when I'm needed. Here, girl, get out, please. I want to talk to my granddaughter. Yes, ma'am. I got here as quickly as I could. Oh, but I was going home. I sent you a wire yesterday. Sit down. Is it true that you're going to quit the movies? I never want to hear of them again. What are you running away from, child? I'm not running away. It's just that I can't go on. My, my heart isn't in it anymore. Once I told you, if you get what you want, you might have to give your heart in exchange. And I said I was willing. Well, I was. I've proved it. I've given my heart, Granny. Yes, you made a bargain. And now you're whining over it. I wouldn't be very proud of myself if I were you. I'm not. It's just that I... I got so much more than I bargained for, Granny. More success, more fame, more happiness. And so much more unhappiness. It's all come so quickly, Granny. I've lived a whole lifetime in a few short years. And when Norman died, something died in me, too. My life is over, Granny. There's no reason for it now. And I can't go on any longer. I just can't. You've got to. Tragedy is the test of courage, Esther. I never knew Norman Maine. He was sweet to me in the letter he wrote when you were married. He said that you told him how much I meant to you. But I know how much you must have meant to him. And I can't believe that wherever he is, Esther, he is very proud, knowing that all that his love did for you was to make you a, a quitter. The car's ready, Miss Lester. You'll have to go now to make the train. Put the car back in the garage. We're going to stay. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great occasion. The entire picture industry has come to the Chinese theater for this opening tonight to pay tribute to a great star, a girl who has won the heart of the world, Miss Vicki Lester. And now, if I'm not mistaken, Miss Lester's car has just driven up. Yes, there she is. I'll see if I can get her here to say a few words. Here she comes. No, wait. She's stopping, folks. I don't know what it's all about, but... What is it, Jim? Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Lester has stopped at the footprints of her late husband, Norman Maine. She, she's a little upset. I, I don't think we're going to get her up here. No, wait. She's pulling herself together. She seems to be all right, ladies and gentlemen. She's approaching the microphone now. Miss Lester, will you... Miss Lester, we're on a national hookup here. Your fans are hoping you'll say a few words to them. Would you please? Of course. Hello, everybody. This is... This is... Mrs. Norman Maine. Before our stars return for their curtain call... Here's an interesting thing I read about Hollywood the other day. More than a thousand ways of saving vital materials are being used in movie making today. Yes, conservation, saving things so they'll serve longer, is important now. One thing that's playing a big part in saving precious fabrics for Hollywood studios is Lux Flakes. Leading motion picture studios use gentle Lux for all their washable costumes, so they'll stay fresh and unfaded longer and keep their true colors before the camera. Now, you can well believe that in times like these, the studios choose the care they know is really safe. Women know, too, from their actual experience that Lux Flakes are wonderfully gentle, safe for everything safe in plain water. With gentle Lux care, there's no cake soap rubbing, no harmful alkali to injure fabrics or colors. So your dresses, blouses, sweaters, the children's clothes, your nice household linens will last longer, wear better when you lux them. 
In your conservation program for 1943, make this your motto. Don't trust to luck, trust to lux. Now, here's Mr. DeMille and our stars. If ever a performance deserved a curtain call, it's a star is born. And here are the two stars responsible, Judy Garland and Walter Pigeon. Made any New Year resolutions yet, Judy? Sure. More bonds, less butter. <laughs> <laughs> Can't go wrong on that. What's yours, Walter? Well, for one thing, I'm cutting down on conversation. And I'm going to try to get other people to do the same thing. Of course, that may get me in trouble. I suppose you mean conversation about the war, Walter. Yes, it's uh, all summed up in one slogan, Judy. Careless talk costs lives. Or if you like it even shorter, zip your lip. On <laughs> little bits of military information. Yes, that's the way modern espionage works. It's like the like a gigantic news gathering agency piecing together hundreds of seemingly unrelated facts. No more beautiful blonde spies? <laughs> well, I haven't seen one recently, Judy. Even in pictures. <laughs> well, how do you figure not talking is going to get you in trouble, Walter? Well, from now on, uh, Judy, when somebody says to me, My brother is sailing tonight, they just gave him a tropical sun helmet. I'm going to suggest that it's dangerous talk and might sink that brother's ship if heard by the wrong people. I may be sticking my neck out, but it's for a good cause. If everybody joins that crusade, Walter, the enemy agents will starve to death. Good luck with it. Uh, I have one question, C.B. No uh, military information involved. Uh, what's your play next week? Well, it's quite military, Walter. Because next week, our play is The metro goldwyn Mayor hit The Bugle Sound. Ah, and our stars will be Wallace Beery and Marjorie Rambo. <laughs> the Bugle Sounds is a story of a rugged old cavalry sergeant whose regiment is being mechanized. But, but mechanizing Wallace Beery is a man-sized job for any <laughs> army. So don't, don't miss this drama of adventure in tanks and jeeps next Monday night. Well, with two swell players like Wally Beery and Marjorie Rambo, you're sure to have a great show, Mr. DeMille. Good night. Good night, C.B. Good night. Good night. Star is born with a blessed event for us. This coming week, we turn the page on a new year. 1943 holds nothing but promise. The promise of a clean page. The record that will be written there, one year from today, will be what we make it. We will have only ourselves to praise or blame. The man on the fighting front, the man and the girl in the machine gun factory... The farmer in his wheat field all have a personal part in making the history of this year. And when the day of victory comes, as it must, they can all say, this day is mine. And a free radio, a free press, and a free screen will join free men and women everywhere, inhaling not just a new year, but a new era and a bright new world. And now, for old time's sake and for new time's sake, our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes and Lux Toilet Soap, send their wishes of good fortune and a safe return home to the hundreds of their employees, both men and women, who are now in the armed services, and to all men and women in our country's service, wherever they may be. And our sponsors send their heartiest good wishes to each and every one of you. All here in the Lux Radio Theater, join me in echoing these hopes for a joyful and victorious new year. And we invite you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Wallace Beery and Marjorie Rambo in the Bugle Sound. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> Heard in tonight's play were Leo Cleary as Oliver Niles, Charles Seal as Libby, Verna Felton as Granny, Arthur Q. Bryan as Moon, and Francis Robinson, Fred Mackay, Jane Morgan, Eddie Marr, Norman Field, Bruce Payne, Graham Denton, Arthur Gilmore, Griff Barnett, and Jane Bierce. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in next Monday night to hear Wallace Beery and Marjorie Rambo in The Bugle Sounds. Free. Yes, absolutely free. A sample of Vim's, the new low-cost vitamin mineral tablets. Ladies, 
If you haven't tried yet, Vim's, now's the time. Just send your name and address to this station. You'll soon receive a free sample of Vim's. Remember, write to this station. Ask for your free Vim's today. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.